We are racing for the European Le Mans series at Le Castellet. Well, that's looked to me to be a start that will require some investigation. their way through the S-Bend at Verary, and I really do mean bouncing because Henrik Hedman has spun in the middle of the road, but there were three cars. And Bar Barbadian driver Kiffin Simpson to the inside, number 65, and uh, Panis Racing, sorry, Mal 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 Maldonado, I should say, in the 65 car. So Kiffin Simpson has dropped a little further behind, it would appear. Paul Lafargue and Manuel Maldonado running second and third now with Simpson in there in fourth. Yeah, Vlad Lompko well away here. So he has behind him Jim Maguire, who is in another United Order Sports LMP2, but it's side by side now between these two battlers, Edex Sport and Algarve Pro Racing, and Kiffin Simpson on the inside line in the black nosed LMP2. Touch there between the GMB Motorsport and Aston Martin with the Golden Arches on its nose and the car guy run by Kessel Racing Ferrari number 57. They are totally dead heating across the line. That's for third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh positions here with the Ferrari now hanging with the door mirror off. It's just about uh, hanging on for grim death there with a cable, it looks like, or a tether. And now muscling its way up the inside is Vlad Lomko, the overall race leader in the number 47 LMP2. A trio of battling LMP3 cars, two of which from Euro International. So mightily impressive from Glenn von Berlo, who started the number 10 car. Big problem for me coming through Verary S at the start of the lap. It's a rear left which is launching itself as they head down to the Mistral straight. That is a wild ride for the number eight Team Virage car. In pit lane, no minimum pit stop times, remember, for the LMP2 and LMP2 programs. Duncan Cameron could have been a little more tidy, and that may well be about to be explained. Oh, up the inside, there was a bit of dust or maybe smoke being kicked up there. GT cars do battle again. This is Christian the lead. Reed still trying to finish off his driving time, uh, but uh, David Perel is now right on his boot lid. Now, this is not essentially a fair fight, and Christian Reed's probably being told to allow David Perel through. You don't want to waste too much time defending. Oh, contact between the GMB Aston and the car guy, cut 57. That's not the first time we've seen that either. Jens Moller and Takeshi Kimura have already come to blows, and that's what meant the Ferrari 57 lost its door mirror. Well, at this stage, as he oh, looks at the inside, oh, he hits the team car. He hits Michael Fassbender. So Fassbender moved to the left. They're also both being shrouded by the protocol. Oh, he's hit, him, he's hit again! And the problem was the secondary bit of contact as the Porsche flicked around. It took the rear uh, wheel cover. This is safety, safety car. car. So, so there goes Alex Lin's lead of six seconds well, back to Richard de Guerres. Trouble from the Robin. Aston Martin is off yeah. the road, dropping down the order. He ha he was something like fourth at he the was second. He was second. He was cycle proton competition through to the lead for the moment in LMP2 Pro Am. Still cars side by side. This is Racing Team Turkey's 34 car. the GTs do you want to go here the 47 car decided to go left and Richard de Geer, as I think will still just about be in front because Charlie Eastwood was stuck on the right hand side but the 55 David Perel Ferrari was in there oh. he's got him he's got him uh, yeah, yeah, as long as Eastwood can now get to the inside line he of can. Virage du Comp he went to the high side of turn four it's side by side between the LMP3 front runners. So that was Leo Weiss's opportunity as Matthias Luton was somewhat on the back foot, allowing quicker cars through. Here comes the number 12 Duquesne versus Ligier. As long as he can get it stopped into the first corner, then Luton is down a position. Sideways for the 12 car that was the race leader in Leo Weiss. So all of a sudden we wind the tape back again. Edex Sport, Lawrence Herr makes the pass. Muscles his way through on the Duquesne car. That's for second position overall. 
And Rennie Binder goes off track in a search for that first second place back and gets it. Now, will he be allowed to keep that, Johnny? Well, he wasn't fully off the road. It wasn't Was he? Just, no, wasn't he? I didn't think so, but it's difficult to tell from our camera angle. Yes, he vaulted the curve. Now the inside, classic stuff. Saw Colin Noble pull a move off like that yesterday in the Lomont Cup. And they're trying to be lapped by the 23 United Order Sports car, which safely gets by as well. Matteo Crisoni almost in this battle as well. And it's actually been a very good run out of uh, the corners onto the, onto the Mistral straight, but now there'll be no holding back Louis Delatraz. And Jose Maria Lopez had no answer to the Swiss's pace there. It's absolutely side by side between these two as well, and that is Jose Maria Lopez under pressure. James Allen to the high side at senior corner, but the Argentinian keeps the inside line. Into Lotel corner, and again it was the 21. It was the it was the hit from the six from the 57 from and the it, 16. They were getting bottled up behind. Two abreast for the race lead, James Allen to the inside and will get it into the final corner. And Louis Delatraz now trying to bury the throttle to get up alongside the Australian. Where's Johnny? He's a bit further back. The United Auto Sports car is not on the lead lap. That's a Pro-Am car. Absolutely door handle to door handle as they head into the first corner at Verary. And James Allen will have the advantage, although Delatraz will take some shaking off. And he has the inside line, but no longer as Johnny jinks to the inside inside of the United Auto Sports car. Louis Delatraz and this second place, but Johnny's got the run here, and I think he's going to have to give it up. He does. Neil Johnny through to second place. Edex Sport, that car had to jink into pit road. It oh, was a was spin. The 16. After Picariello made contact. Where is Milton Jakobsen? He's the next car. So here is James Allen in the number 25 car for Algarve Pro Racing, sharing with Alex Lynn and Kiffin Simpson. They win in the four hours of Le Castellet. Second position goes to Neil Jarney and Duquesne team. And Racing Team Turkey win Pro-Am with third overall, ahead of Inter Europol and Cool Competition. LMP3 goes to Racing Spirit Le Mans from WTM and Cool. With Proton and Iron Links, a Porsche 1-2 ahead of the best Ferrari from Kessel Racing in GTE. Proton's number 77 Porsche started on the GTE pole and they were still in front four hours later. You know, the car was, was, was really mega to drive, so set up, uh, they could do a great job on set up and the balance was so nice. Uh, uh, yeah, and you know, after the, the start in Barcelona, I'm quite happy to win this race and uh, yeah, Jamalco and my little Shushu <laughs> did a great job, so I'm super happy. Proton coming out on top in GTE, Iron Links is yellow Porsche in second and Kessel Racing taking third in their Ferrari. Iron Lynx have a three-point series lead, the top seven covered by ten points. <laughs> Victory in LMP3 to Racing Spirit of Le Mans as Antoine Ducan brings them across the line to the joy of Jacques Wolf and Jean-Ludovic Foubert. Yeah, it was a very difficult end of the race. They've done a very good job to, to keep the, the car clean uh, with a good position and I was able to come from P6 to P1, so yeah, very happy. Joining Racing Spirit Le Mans on the podium, WTM by Rinaldi in second and Cool Racing in third. And that means the crew of the number 17 Cool car now have a one-point advantage over Racing Spirit of Le Mans. Tight at the top, you betcha. They may not have won overall here, but LMP2 Pram victory goes to Racing Team Turkey's Sally Olic, Charlie Eastwood and Louis Delatraz. To be fair, I think we were very fast today. All the team did a good job, my teammates as well, and then uh, 10 laps to go to the front left blue, so I had a 
poked your tire basically the whole time. We, uh, we better to stay out and yeah, could still save the overall podium, but uh, not ideal. So perhaps it could have been a second overall victory. Racing Team Turkey do claim LMP2 Pro-Am ahead of Cool Racing's 37 team and the 83 from AF Corsa. And that means, of course, that they stay on top of the points with a 19-point advantage over Francois Perodo and his crew in 83 and Cool Racing's number 37 lineup. Delight for James Allen and Algar Pro. It was a crazy one. Um, the start was pretty tough from fifth and everyone kind of got stacked up with uh, some weird stuff going on on the right side. Um, but after that, I just put my head down, tried to move forward and we were able to pass it over to Alex in P1. So I think the whole team did a great job today. First win of the season for Algar Pro with Duquesne finishing second and Racing Team Turkey third overall. All of which means that the Duquesne team lead the standings in LMP2 ahead of Algar Pro with Panis in third. Now you guys are all caught up on all the action that has happened here in Le Castellet. We've seen the highs and lows here at Paul Ricard for the second round of ELMS. Now it's on to the third round, which will be held in Aragon, Spain. On the 26th of August, join us for the first night race. See you then.